hello and that is right dsm 7.2 the release candidate the old rc is now available for those that aren't aware the release candidate is pretty much the end of any kind of beta process it's the final intended product that the brand is ultimately going to roll out there and the release candidate has now been made available for frankly quite a lot of systems and you can find out more about it link below in the uh, release notes there for dsm dsm 7.2 64551 now if you will come to this video just to learn that, then you don't need to hang around. Uh, the rest of this video is going to be me showing you the changes that have been made since the DSM 7.2 beta and the DSM 7.2 release candidate. Before we go any further though, I will highlight once again, do not install this unless you are comfortable with a non-full public release. What I mean by that, although an RC is significantly more robust than that of a beta, it's got not only all of the features of the beta and the tweaks and tunes and probably taken on a lot of the information uh, and the uh, kind of learned highs and lows of a beta and then implementing them in a release candidate, but also it improves upon any existing kind of uh, security vulnerability fixes that have been applied to the public releases such as DSM 7.1. So as good as all that sounds, do bear in mind that a release candidate is still the final, final, final step before public release. So it's for a number of you, particularly again, running uh, data center, a number of you running kind of mission critical data, I would still recommend sitting on the fence because make sure you know that when you update to any full-blown big release of DSM, you can't roll back easily without some knocking around with SSH and potentially bricking your system, so do bear that in mind. But um, if we go through the notes, we can see all of the notes there, and I'll be straight with you, there's not been a tremendous amount of change between the DSM 7.2 beta and the, the DSM uh, 7.2 release there. Now, the things to take on board uh, pretty much come down to three things. I made an article about this before, and I've updated that article that I published about a week ago, uh, talking about the RC release and all the indications we were getting there. But on top of that, I've already made a video linked in the description where it was going through the DSM 7.2 beta, all of the features. Lots of stuff to do with uh, pools, to do with the volume encryption, uh, to do with uh, the write once, read many, to do with the container manager application. There's been individual applications on those as well. So I'm not going to be going into a lot of detail. But the three things to really zoom in on are these. Number one, uh, support of M2NVMe storage pools has been improved even further, for good and for bad, in my opinion. Because on the one hand, uh, your M2NVMe storage pools being supported was already a thing on the newer release technologies there, and they added support for some older units. That was already covered in the beta. But this device here is the one that I think is going to be a point of contention. Because on the one hand, really pleased that DS423 Plus released about a month, month and a half ago, um, is now going to have M2 NVMe storage pool support. But as you can see from my descriptions in the article, what I'm less keen on is this is the same CPU that was inside the 920, the, uh, the 420 series, I should say, same series of CPU. So not quite the same, but the dual core version. And the DS720. And those devices have not had, at least at the time of the release candidate becoming available, M2 NVMe storage pool enabling there. So it's good that they've added M2 NVMe storage pool support on more devices since the beta. But, you know, and it's very hard to shape that narrative that the newer 423 can use it, even though it's a Gen 2 system and the older Gen can't. Another thing is the older generation M2 D1 8 adapter card. That was their M2 NVMe cache card there using the M2 NVMe SSDs. Uh, the older gen, so not even the M2 D20, but the previous generation of card has now been made supportive and usable in the 22 and 21 series of several rack station solutions there. That's a really odd one. And I don't know if that's a hardware availability issue. Um, or the fact that the old, the newer card had some sort of in inconsistency with that. But that's an odd extra to add on to the release candidate. And the last thing, as I mentioned in the introduction, is the improvements of all of the vulnerabilities and fix uh, vulnerability fixes and security enhancements uh, that would have been rolled into DSM 7.1 in the intervening months. And there are plenty there to be getting along with. There have also the changes, as mentioned, 
all the existing ones I mentioned in the previous video for 7.2, uh, the beta. So again, that is your volume encryption. That is your right one to read many. Uh, again, changing some of the stuff to do with the way stuff is uh, presented in DSM. So right here, we've got a DS920 Plus. And going back to that thing with M2 NVMEs, and I know a number of you are going to think I'm ragging on them a little bit here. But a number of you, when I made my previous video talking about M2 NVMe storage pools and performance, a number of you asked about, is it possible to create a storage pool uh, on some existing M2 NVMe's, pull them out, or obviously power down the system, pull them out and pop them in another Synology system, would it still recognize those storage pools? Because it works with SHR, right? You take an SHR plus series now, you pop that in an XS, which isn't supposed to support SHR, and it will see it. Sadly, while I was migrating uh, or putting DSM 7.2 release candidate on a Synology DS920 here, and we open it up there, I'm accessing this not only remotely but via a VPN, so forgive the drop in performance there. But as you can see, it won't allow us to use the storage pools on some N2 NVMEs on this system that doesn't have that supported. So do bear that in mind. You can't just use M2 NVMEs. Uh, as storage port in a system that supports it. In this case, this was using a 920, I believe, and migrate them over. By doing so, you're going to need to reset that drive, uh, which I will do after the recording. But they have changed some of the layout of things, and the information and the health. Uh, it should be said that the bulk of the big change just comes down to the drive status level there. Even if we go to the global settings there on the storage pool, there's not a vast amount of change, but I do want to talk about this, the encrypted key vault. Because one of my harshest criticisms uh, when we were looking at DSM in the beta kind of still exists, and that's to do with the location and the management of the key of your encrypted vault. And unfortunately, in the re uh, uh, release candidate version of DSM 7.2, it still appears to be here. To put that into perspective, if I go ahead and create a volume here, I'm just going to go ahead and create ourselves a 1000 gig volume. From there, I'm going to use BTRFS. I am going to encrypt this volume. It will ask me to uh, confirm my vault key. For those that aren't aware, the vault key is the internal locker of uh, encrypted keys within the Synology NAS. Go ahead and click OK. It will then allow you to create this encrypted volume there. And again, encrypted volumes are a very good thing. It will allow you to download uh, a key for you to utilize locally to access that volume. And again, I've got to confirm that I've got it, and then it will allow this new encrypted volume to be created there. So what's the big deal? What's my big problem? Well, as mentioned before, my big issue is this it is that yes i've got a local copy of this key but i can't disable the encrypted vault i can't remove the key from inside this system now yes if someone's accessing it remotely they're still gonna have to go through my two-step my 2fa there uh, my login maybe go through some you know um, ip blocking if they're making mistakes or unknown ips i get all that but once they get in to the system my volumes are already unlocked if i log out of this system now let's log out there let's sign out of the system and i re-log back in so yes i am still using the same ip here but i am coming in via a vpn so let's go ahead and change my location shall we let's go for somewhere else let's log out of the vpn turn it off and then we're going to go in via a completely different ip here so again, we're disconnected from there. I'm going to come in under a different country there. Let's select Ireland, for example. Now I'm going to come in on an Irish um, um, uh, VPN there. So my IP is going to be slightly different. I'm going to go ahead and refresh that page to log back into my NAS. Then I'm going to go ahead with my login credentials. Again, I'm using a keyboard I'm not familiar with, so I am definitely going to keep an eye on what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and log into my system there. And again, I've not set up my 2FA on this. I've not done IP blocking or anything like that. You may well have those logged and factored into your system. But if I go into the storage pool there, go into the storage manager, it looks like it's already opening up. Remember, I'm coming in via VPN there, so it's incredibly limited traffic. But as you can see, I can now access this volume I've just created. I've still got access to it. If we're going to the storage manager there, I can still do all that. And I don't like that if I'm coming from outside, I can still access. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm aware that you can't just dismount a volume. I get it. But at the very least, it should at least stop me seeing it without confirmation. Or what's worse still, 
which again, up until this point, I've only been discussing light walls. If I reboot the system, and I'm not going to do that now because it will elongate the video, but if I, eat, if I restart the system, it will not ask me to reconfirm my key. It will use the internal key stored in those root logs, and therefore, you know, the key becomes a little bit meaningless if I can't disable its existence from within DSM there. Um, the only other thing really worth touching on in this big release, and again, there's the smaller improvements that have come into Synology Office and stuff like that, but there is, of course, the right ones read many functionality there, and that largely hasn't changed since the beta. It's still pretty much the same. We can go ahead, and again, we can disable the right recycle bin if we want. We can go ahead and protect it with that right once functionality there, and there's still the enterprise mode for, that allows admins to at least implement changes and compliance mode, which means no one can once it's created and there's also the auto lock functionality there so we've still got all of the features and functionality that we saw of uh right once read many based uh, shared folders on the nas that we saw in the beta so not a huge amount of change there but i really wish they had changed the way they have approached uh, key management on this system at the very least just the idea that you can disable or dismount the volume if you choose to when you're not using it. I get why they wouldn't include the option to force uh, ownership of the key every time someone logs in. I get that. You don't really want to dismount volumes. It could break everything. But it's the idea that there is that key inside. And I just simply don't have that option in the global settings to just disable that local key there. I should be able to disable it, and at the very least, when I restart my system, I should be able to uh, have to force the me, the admin user, or any sysadmin to inst uh, utilize that key locally rather than within that system, my local client local. But this has been a quick update there on the release candidate of DSM 7.2. Uh, again, we're going to wait until the full release. We might do another full DSM uh, review. We did uh, 7.1 mid last year, so I'm not sure if it's too soon, but we'll see. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Again, link to the article in the description. Do check that out. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.